mode. Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? We will be getting started in just a minute or so. What's up, Aaron, Adrian, Barton, Bill, Billy, Bob, Bob Claims, Carolyn Huff, Catherine Wittich, Kathy Ladau, CC, Charlie Craig, Dan, and we got a lot of people on already. Dave, uh, David Abrams, Dave Blau, George, Jordan, Harold Nielsen, James Mahan, Jason Prinzel, or Pringle, I'm sorry, buddy, Jay Allred, Jeff, Jeff Gray, Jeff Livingston, Jim Lush, Jimmy Fuentes, Jimmy Slegel, Joe Emmett, John C., John Anthony, Carl, Keith, Keith Baxter, what's up, brother? Keith Richard, Ken Dino, Lou Silva, Marty Kind, Mel. Man, I'm only to the M's. There's a lot of people on. Welcome, welcome, guys. I'm going to give it just another minute or two to let people trickle in. People are coming in left and right at the moment. So uh, give me one second. I'm going to go away, and then I'm going to hit record, and uh, we'll get this thing kicked off. All right, all right, guys. Welcome to today's webinar. As you guys see on the screen today, we're giving away three pieces of software, guys. And this is all designed to help you get some easy, easy wins. Today's call is going to be a little bit different than normal. All right, so think of today more like a workshop. If we were sitting together, I'm going to be showing you something, and then I'm going to be having you guys do it, right? And then I'm going to show you the next piece, and I'm going to have you guys do it. All right, so I'm going to give you just a minute yet to free all of your distractions. If you're on your cell phone and you're calling in to get to a computer, to exit out of everything, today you guys will be following along and implementing as we go through this webinar. <clears throat> So here's the deal, all right? I'm giving you guys three pieces of software today, all for free, okay? It's not some limited beta program where, uh, you know, in two weeks or a month from now when, when we get the whole process perfected that we're going to charge you guys, okay? So it is completely free. There's no monetary value involved. Okay. In return from you guys, I need three things. Okay, Your commitment, number one, to actually use the software. Okay, Commitment number two, for you guys to actually give us feedback on the software as well. Right? What can we do to improve the process? Right? What can we do to make it more valuable? Okay, And number three, is a testimonial with your guys' results, okay? When you get results, which you will if you follow the system, I just want some feedback from you, right? I want that testimonial. So real quick before we go any further, just give me a one in the chat if you guys agree to hold up the quote-unquote deal. That sounds good, right? So I'm going to need at least 80, 90% of you guys to give me a one before we move on, all right? All right, cool. Thanks, guys. So um, you guys, um, I, I want to give you guys a place to provide feedback and communicate about today's training past just today, right? So you guys can do that in the Slack app in the beta channel, okay? So basically, I want to show you guys where this is, and I want you guys to log into your Slack app and go to the beta channel. All right, so I'm going to open up Slack here in my browser, and I want you guys to all mimic this. You guys are all either in local lead gen mastery or you guys are in our sales mastermind. All right, so jump in either group, and up here under channels, you guys will see beta. Okay, if you don't see beta, hit this little plus button, and it'll show you the available groups. 
Okay, so go right now and join the beta for either the Sales Mastermind or the local Lead Gen Mastery Slack app. Okay, and then inside of beta, just post here. Okay, so post right here. And I'm going to invite everyone to the channel as well. So I'm going to say join the beta channel. Okay. And then you guys should all see the beta channel. All right. Awesome. You guys are in. You guys are in. Okay. So if you haven't joined yet, go ahead and join. If you guys are in the April Mastermind group, again, just go ahead and, uh, and do the same thing. So let me just make a post in there as well. Okay, cool. All right, so you guys are flying in. Cool. So after today's webinar, this training and updates aren't really over, right? I want your guys' feedback in those channels, okay? If you guys have questions about the process, I want you posting in the channel as well, all right? I need one more favor for you guys before we really get started, okay? One more favor, okay? I need you guys to give my support team a week before you ask them any questions about what we're talking about today. Okay, because frankly, I rushed to get this into your guys' hands and they have no idea, right? You guys are gonna be more up to speed than them. Does that make sense? So just give me a two if you guys agree. You'll give my week or my team a week to catch up and understand the process that I'm giving you guys today. Okay, so that doesn't mean you don't have anywhere to ask questions. Okay, do it inside of Slack, right? Do it in that beta channel. Cool. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump in. So the process that we're going to be talking about today, the three pieces of software that we're going to be giving you guys today, is all around the probing, prodding, or poking method. Everybody calls it a little bit something different. Understand that all three of those words are basically interchangeable. So real quick, just by a show of hands, give me a three if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about. If you know what probing, poking, or prodding is, don't say anything. If you don't, give me a three. All right, so we got a couple threes. All right, so we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about this. We're going to talk to you guys about the changes that we've made in this process. Okay, so ultimately at the end of the day, the theory and the thought behind probing and poking and prodding all means the same thing, guys, is basically the test to see how quickly you can get on the first page of Google, right? And we're doing that with YouTube videos. Okay, we have a very different methodology than a lot of people when it comes to probing and poking, right? And this concept in the marketplace keeps adapting and morphing and changing over time. So we personally, we take a marketing video and we upload it to our channel before poking, right? We mark this as Creative Commons when we upload it. Okay, then we're going to use this for probing and poking. And if you guys are lost, you gave me a three, it's okay. Don't worry, I'll explain. A lot of people in the marketplace, though, are using junk videos that don't mean anything, have no call to actions, and it's just to see if you can rank on page one. So what those other quote-unquote gurus tell you to do is then delete the videos and redo everything with real videos. Okay, well, guys, let's think about this. This process is super easy to do, right? What happens when you do 100 pokes or probes and 20 of them rank on page one, right? The other guys, the other quote-unquote gurus would tell you guys to delete the video and upload a new quote-unquote marketing video, right? A legit video versus just like a templated video. Okay, to me, guys, that is just ass backwards, Okay, I don't want to delete videos, and I don't want to have to do more work than I need, period. Okay, give me a four if you guys think that that makes sense. You guys understand where I'm going with this. 
All right, cool. So for those of you guys that don't know how to do poking and probing, real, real quick, I'm going to do a little demo of this process. I'm going to show you guys the basics of probing and poking, and I'm going to show you guys as well, those of you guys that have been doing it for a while, how we do things that are a little bit different, right? How we have changed the process up, okay? So basically what we're going to do is we're going to log into our YouTube account, and uh, I'm just going to load up uh, my browser here one sec. We're going to go to Creator Studios. We're going to click Create and then go to Video Editor. And then we're going to paste the URL of a Creative Commons video into the search videos box. Okay, so let me just get over to YouTube. And I'll walk you guys real quick step by step through this so you guys can see what we're doing. And then I'm going to obviously be teaching you guys how we're, how we're automating this. So let me just log into one of my YouTube accounts. If I knew the password. Okay. Okay, and guys, usually I don't use Firefox, but with the automation that I'm going to show you guys today, you guys are going to need to be using Firefox, okay? And so that's why I brought it up in Firefox. So basically how this process works is we would go to Creator Studio. Okay, then we're going to hit Create here, and then we're going to go to Video Editor. Okay, and the reason this isn't showing is just my flash isn't up to date here on Firefox. It doesn't really matter, uh, but we could update it. But basically what we do is we would name the project whatever it is that we're trying to rank for, right? So maybe it would be um, emergency, plumber, uh, city, and then state. So let's say like Jupiter, uh, FL, right? So let's say that's the phrase that we want to rank for. So what people are telling you guys to do in this po poking and prodding process is they're telling you guys just to use Creative Commons videos, to go over here to Creative Commons and do a search, and they tell you to do it for like anything, right? So we're going after a plumber, so let's do plumbing here and hit search. So you just pick one of these is what other people are telling you. That's not what we do. Okay, the way that we're running this now is we upload a video first, okay? So what we would do is we'd upload a video, okay, and I'm just going to upload one here, uh, plumbing, somewhere in here. Uh, I'll give you guys a real life example here. Maybe it's plumber. Okay, here we go. Oh. So my video upload failed. Let's try that again. Upload. There we go. where that one went, right? Ah, here we go. Here's a plumber video. Okay, cool. So basically, I name this whatever I want, guys, and it doesn't matter at all. This is going to be my default video that I use for everything, okay? So I'm going to just put in some basic info here. It needs to be public, and then under advanced settings, under license and rights ownership, we're going to put creative commons, all right? And then now, since we've used it as Creative Commons, we're going to click Publish. You guys will see the video live here. So let's go ahead and go there. Now, by using that, by uploading it first, in here, we can put in our URL that we want to use. And it's going to take just a second for this to load. Okay, there it is actually already. Okay, so what we do now, the process manually, is we would add the video that we uploaded. Okay, then we're going to go over here to the little text icon. We're going to add a banner to our video, and this helps us make it unique. So we would basically add in our information here. So we're going to load this up to make this video unique, right? And so we'd probably end up putting like a phone number here too. Okay, so we're using a real marketing video. We upload that first, and then to make the video unique, we're adding text to it with the banner. Give me a three if that just makes sense to everybody. 
three, three, three. Cool. Awesome, guys. Okay, so then let's get back over to the slides. Now that you guys know kind of how we're doing it, basically with the banner, we'd add two lines of text to it. Okay, and again, the reason that we're doing the banner is to make the video unique. A big problem that a lot of people have that teach this is that their videos are all exactly the same, and so you have a lot more videos and channels getting slapped or going down. Okay, the second thing that we do after we use that, after we go through and we make a video using the video editor, so let's say that we want to do one for Jupiter, Florida, we click create video, the next step of the process is we click the info and settings button, we go under advanced settings and we're going to put in our video location here. This is the city that we're trying to rank for, right, so we're going to put in it, put it in and hit search. Okay, save changes. Okay, and now our video location, if we refresh, is now the actual geo coordinates, typically. Here we go. The geo coordinates is supposed to show. Okay, now for that video. Okay, so great optimization little hack there that we added as well to the probing and poking process. Okay, everybody with me so far? They understand why they should be poking and probing, quick, easy, fast rankings, and they understand how we currently, by hand, are doing poking and probing. Does that make sense? I need you guys to give me some feedback in the chat. I need you guys to tell me it makes sense before we move on, all right, because I'm going to teach you guys how to automate this and literally leverage the shit out of it, but before I do, I need to make sure you guys understand the fundamentals. Okay, so the shitty parts of this process is, number one, it's all done by hand, okay? Um, there has been some software out on the marketplace that people have been selling that quote-unquote automates the process, but the problem we found is that it still requires a ton of setup, right? You gotta sit down and you gotta come up with all the keyword phrases that you're going after, what videos you're gonna use for everything, and let's say that you're trying to do 100 or 200 a day, right? That's gonna take a little time to do that legwork every single day, right? You're gonna have to enter in every single keyword that you're gonna wanna target, right? No thanks, I'm not interested in that. That takes too long. Okay, the next big problem is how do you track your rankings, all right? So imagine doing 500 pokes or, or prods, right? And now you want to know which ones of them ranked. Well, good luck, right? How are you going to do that? Okay, what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today and giving you guys today gets rid of each of these three shitty pieces of this process. So before we go in, I need to talk to you guys about some best practices. And one of these has to do with keeping YouTube accounts alive. Okay, so best practices when you're doing pro poking or probing is make sure, number one, that you're using throw away YouTube accounts. Okay, what I mean by that is that you don't have email hooked to it or a, a, uh, a YouTube channel that you care about. If that account got slapped tomorrow, it wouldn't matter. Okay, and understand, guys, part of this process is you will lose some channels. Okay, not your marketing channels, your ones that really matter. You're going to use some of these, or you're going to lose some of these probing channels. Okay, that's why we want to make sure that we're using throwaway YouTube accounts. Okay, best practice number two is to upload one video by hand. Just upload it through YouTube normally like I just showed you guys 24 hours before you want to start probing or poking on that YouTube account. Okay, third best practice is only run 50 probes or pokes per channel per day. 
Okay, and last but not least, uh, we personally are only putting 200 total probes or pokes on each channel. So this last point, guys, why do you think we're only putting 200 total on each channel? Give me some feedback in the chat. We're spreading out our risk, right? So I know people, good friends of mine, that have had thousands of videos on their YouTube channel using proking and probing, proding, poking, prodding, whatever you want to call it, right? And literally had their entire channel slapped. Okay, it's literally starting back over at zero for them. Okay, guys, I don't like starting back over at zero, right? I like building momentum and keeping momentum. If you guys look at how we do everything else in terms of site builds and ranking, we minimize our risk for everything. Okay, it, I don't teach you guys, for example, to build huge mammoth sites with hundreds of thousands of pages indexed and to have all of your eggs in one basket there, right? Why, again, if it gets slapped, you're starting back at zero. Okay, give me a four if that makes sense. You guys, understand that you need to work on minimizing your risk with this strategy, okay? I don't want anybody to submit a support ticket saying, I used my main YouTube channel, and I did 500 pokes in a day, and it got slapped. They shut down my channel. Right? That's why I want to make sure we talk about best practices. Again, really the problem why your channels get flagged, why your videos get flagged, is your competitors are doing it. Okay, Using this process, you guys can dominate very, very quickly. What happens is YouTubers will report you. Okay, So again, too many on an account. So if you lose 100 or 200, it's not really that big of a deal, right? Separate your channels and understand, guys, at the end of the day using this process that you are going to lose some accounts. Okay, I've already seen this comment come up. Where do we get YouTube accounts? Okay, guys, I search or I suggest if you guys are doing like low quantity to use Fiverr. So if you use Fiverr, you don't want to actually search on Fiverr for YouTube accounts. What you're going to want to do is go to Fiverr and do a search instead for Gmail, right? A Google account is a Google account is in a Google account, right? If you use, if you look for YouTube accounts, you're going to have a hard time finding them. If instead you do a search for Gmail or Gmail PBA, you guys are going to find a lot of gigs in here for very cheap. Uh, so I know that like the last one that I just bought on here. Um, I don't think it was this one. The icon doesn't look familiar. But I got 25 Google accounts for $5. And so far, each and every one of them have worked without fail. Okay, if you guys are doing this process and you start really, really leveraging the shit out of it, and you have VAs running this process like around the clock with our software and you need to buy accounts in bulk, I would uh, suggest that you guys look at xgcmedia.com. Okay, so you guys can go in here to YouTube PVAs and their PVAs in bulk. You can get 250 PVAs here or you can go all the way up to like 10,000 YouTube accounts. Right? Like crazy, crazy bulk that you guys can do. Okay. <clears throat> all right, you guys ready? Give me five if you guys have turned off all your distractions and are ready to go through the process with me. Okay, and again, this is going to be workshop style. I'm going to teach you how to do it once right before your eyes, and then I'm going to literally stop and ask you to do the same thing. Okay. Somebody says you're going to talk about verification. We don't do verification. We buy accounts that are ready, ready to go. That's what PVA stands for, right? Phone verified account. Cool. All right. So the first thing that we need to do, or the first part of our process, is we need to generate a CSV file. 
and basically we're going to be using macros to automate the poking and probing process, right? But first, we need a CSV with all the data in it that we want the probing macro to use, right? So what's the name of your video? What city is it setting in the video settings? Uh, what's the headline and one and headline two say? Okay, this can take a really, really long time to do if you guys are doing it by hand. Okay, so at the end of the day, we automated this because it was taking us a long time to do. And so if you guys go to web1.co slash probing hyphen template, you guys will see the little utility that we created to help you guys do this. So basically, this is a Google Sheet. Okay, now follow along. You guys need to go to this URL, and I pasted it in the chat. You need to go to File and make a copy. If you don't have that option, make sure, number one, that you're signed into your Google account, and it could be any Google account. And if you still don't have that option, what you'll see is in the URL string for the actual Google Doc that you've pulled up by going to this URL, you'll see something like this, a big long string, and then you'll see slash edit question mark. If you just replace edit with copy, you'll be able to copy the document as well. Okay, so again, file, make a copy if you can. Okay, so then what you're going to do is basically you're going to go to sheet two and you're going to set up your template. And the way that this Google Sheet works is with tokens. Okay, so you guys are going to basically set up your template and then you guys are going to go and add your tokens and it's going to literally blow out that document with every single version that you asked it to generate. Okay, so you guys can have tokens for phone number, URL, YouTube URL, and then city. Okay, so let me real quick just go to this URL and I'm going to show you guys over the shoulder how to do this. And then I'm going to ask you guys to do the same thing. Okay, so follow on here for one more minute. And then you guys can go do this process on your own. All right. So... What I would do is go to file and make a copy. If I were you, I would just get rid of copy of so that it's just called poking video generator. Click OK. It's going to take a second. It's going to copy the doc and it's going to be available, guys, now inside of your Google Documents. Okay. What you're going to want to do is go over to this template tab, sheet number two. And in here, guys, you're going to be able to come up with your guys' template. Okay, so for example, my title template here would be emergency, plumbing service, and then city. Okay, my caption number one, or the, the first part of that backdrop, right, the, the banner there, headline number one is going to be best plumbers in city. Link number two, or, or caption number two, is going to be URL and then phone number. Okay, the video field right here, this is what do you guys want to use as that base URL, right? So what we did, for example, is we uploaded this plumber URL. Okay, so it would use this video to lay over the banner. Okay, so the banner would be laid over this, and then it's going to put in the fields that you guys put inside of here. Okay, then video location, we're going to put city. Okay, here are the available tokens, guys. Make sure that you use them just as is. Don't modify them or the script won't work. Okay, so what I want to show you guys right now is how this works. So let's say that we just leave everything the same. We go to Sheet Actions and Set Tokens. The first time, it's going to ask you for authorization to run. Okay, and you guys just need to click Allow. Once you guys do, it's going to pop open this action panel you're gonna put in the token data, right? What do you want your cities to be, your URLs, your phone number, and your YouTube URLs, right? So I'm just gonna put this in here. So for phone number, obviously I would wanna put like a ACT tracking number. So I'm gonna just put in a phone number here. For URL, I'm gonna put in my money site of whatever niche I'm going after. So let's say that I'm going after plumbingmiami.com is, is my money site. 
the YouTube URL, again, we would come back over here. We're going to grab this URL right here. Okay, I'm going to copy this, go back over to my Google Sheet, put it here, and then cities I'm going to put in here as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put in some cities. So I'm going to do Miami, I'm going to do Palm Beach, Palm Beach Gardens, I'm going to do Jupiter, and these are all areas around me, so I know them really well. West Palm Beach, Lake Park, um, Jupiter Island, Palm Beach Island, uh, let's see, Lake Worth, Boynton Beach, Boca, Raton, Delray Beach. All right, so that's good. We got, I don't know, 10 or 12 in there. And we're going to click Generate. Okay, once you see OK, what you guys are going to want to do is go back over to the Results tab, and you'll see what this Google Sheet has just done for you. Okay, it has went ahead and filled in everything according to your guys' tokens. Okay, and again, what this is going to be used for is the macro. This is what it's going to use for the title of your video, caption number one, caption number two, the video that it's going to overlay, you know, the captions over, okay, or the banners over, and then the video location. Does that make sense? Just give me a Y in the chat. This makes sense. Okay, again, guys, the reason that we use this CSV is so that we don't have to type out all these options, right? The reason that we built this Google Sheet is to make this process a whole lot faster. Okay. Brian said he has a feasing snit. <laughs> so again, you want to set your template, okay? Then you're going to go to Sheet Action, Set Tokens, and then you guys can put in your tokens. Once you hit generate, it's going to generate everything in the results tab. Okay, so the final step of this, watch real close. We're going to finish this up. The final step of this is to go to file, and you're going to go down to download as, and click comma separated value CSV current sheet. And again, make sure that you're on the results tab. So we're going to hit file, download as, and then where's the CSV? CSV, current sheet. Okay, and I downloaded it. So now I want you guys to go do what I just did, right? Go to the probing template. I put the URL in the chat. Go to File, Make a Copy. If you don't have that option, change Edit in the URL, right, to Copy. So now it's going to be living inside of your Google account, the sheet is. Okay, then what you're going to do is go to Sheet 2 and set up your template. Okay, then you're going to set your tokens with whatever data you want, right? Whatever phone number, URL, cities, and YouTube URL, and click Generate. Okay, so questions on that. For those of you guys that got it, go off, do it. Let me know if you have any questions. For those of you guys that have or having problems or have questions, let us know in the chat. Let's see, Dave Thomas says, if I have a burnable account already, uh, already should I wait? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're going to need to follow along step by step, all right? Um, let's see, help with deciding a YouTube URL. So you're going to need to make one YouTube video to actually use as your template, right? So this was my example that I used, right? It's just a video, whoop, super loud for me there. It's just a video that was bought as like a WSO or something. All these videos came in a pack for 10 bucks. Um, what we like to use typically to do these videos is a piece of software called Rep Videos, um, which we use to create the videos, right? But you need a base video that then you're going to overlay everything on top of, right? And so that this is what it looks like at the end, right? This is the headline one, and if you put in two headlines, it, it would go underneath. The URL is your money site, exactly. 
Phone number is going to be, again, guys, your ACT phone number. Carrie, don't get ahead of yourself, Carrie H. We're not there yet. Where is set tokens? Again, fill this all out. The template, fill the template out. Go to sheet actions and set tokens. Do we create additional rows in the template sheet if we want to target multiple keywords? No. If you guys modify this template sheet, you will break it and it won't work. Okay? You guys want to go after a boatload of different keywords, what you're going to do is run it once for one keyword, go to the results, download your CSV, go back to your template and do the same thing again. Sorry, Rick, for jumping on late. You're going to have to come back, buddy. Okay. So I'm going to pull this up. Okay. Go to this URL, I put it in the chat, file, make a copy, okay, and then basically you're going to set up your template on the second sheet. Then you're going to set your tokens by going to sheet actions and set tokens and then click generate. If you don't see sheet actions, go ahead and refresh. Make sure that you're on your copy, the one you made a copy of, all right? Ralph says, never mind, I see sheet actions now, cool. Susan Calendar says, what's the URL? Again, it's in the chat, Susan, and it's right here. Okay, those of you guys that have already ran the process completely, give me a five in the chat to let me know that you guys are done. What's the first URL token? Again, this is your money site. Okay, this is your money site. This is the YouTube URL that you guys want to use as the base to overlay your, uh, overlay your captions onto, right? Phone number is your ACT phone number. Cities are all the cities that you want to target, right? This is how it's going to come up with a bunch of variations, right? So in here, I put 11 cities. And that's why I have 11 rows, right? Well, 12 with the title, right? So if I put in 150 cities, it's going to spit back 150 fields ready to go, right? With all the data that we need to have the macro run this on autopilot for us. Okay, lots and lots of fives. Susan says, thank you, Joe. This is great. Glad you're digging it. Jason says he doesn't have a money site or base YouTube URL, so he's trying to create them now. Jason, just follow along in the process. If you need to, guys, just put junk information in there now so that you guys can go through the process from A to Z so that you understand how it works when you guys are ready to execute with it, okay? All right. So next up, when we download that CSV, what we need to do is, I'll get my finder open here, we need to go find that download. For me, it goes in the downloads folder, okay, so mine is right here, and what we need to do is we need to rename this to pokes, pokes.csv, okay, and I've already have something that uses that name, so it won't let me, right? but you're going to want to rename it to P-O-K-E-S dot C-S-V. Let's see, Tim says working on a client site right now, but I totally get it. So Tim, use it for your client site, buddy, but go through the process with us, okay? How many of you guys aren't done yet? Give me a two if you're not done yet. You still need a second. And again, give me a five if you are done. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you one more minute, and then we're going to move along in the process, okay? One more minute. And don't rush, guys, or don't get freaked out. If it's not perfect, that's okay. I just want you guys to be able to follow along. Okay, so even if you just do what I did and just do the same thing, okay, or you just halfway get it done, just get the CSV done so that you guys can follow along. Just make sure that there's some data in these fields.
The file name again, guys, is supposed to be pokes.csv. You're going to rename that. All right, guys, we're going to move on. Okay, so now that we've generated our CSV, and again, just to make sure that you guys understand, the CSV is the data source that the macro is going to be using. If you don't know what the macro is, the macro is what's going to be automating, doing all the pokes and the probes, right? So basically, all the data that we just put together in this Google Sheet is the videos that are going to be created for us on autopilot. Okay. Okay, so now that we've generated our CSV, again, we need to rename it to pokes.csv. And then basically, the next step is we need to do an install of iMacros into our browser. iMacros is what our script runs off of. Okay, so basically, you guys need to know this only works on Firefox. Okay, so go download Firefox if you don't have it. Again, download Firefox. I'll put the URL in the chat for you guys or search Google, either one. Okay, you're going to install then iMacros for Firefox. So to do this, you're just going to do a search in Google, iMacros, Firefox. Once you have Google install or once you have Firefox installed, do the search for iMacros Firefox. It's going to take you here. And when you visit this page inside of Firefox, you'll be able to install it right from here. So let me show you what that looks like real quick. Okay, so again, download Firefox. Then we're going to go to Google. We're going to do a search for iMacros Firefox. And basically you're going to choose this one, add-ons.mozilla.org. We're going to go here, and then you guys will just click this green Add to Firefox button. Ken says this is going to be a real time saver. Uh, if using Windows, do we still use iMacros? Yes, this works on Mac or PC. Again, guys, it only works, though, on Firefox. Okay, so... Give me a three when you have Firefox downloaded and iMacros installed, all right? The next th part of it's a little complicated, not really, um, but I want to make sure everybody's following along for that, all right? Hurry up, download Firefox, install iMacros, and then give me a three. I'm going to grab a sip of water here, and then we'll pick this thing back up. All right, all right. Yes, there will be a replay, but try to follow along. Again, give me a three if you're ready to go and you haven't yet. Just wait for at least half of you guys before we continue. Again, I'm trying to help you guys go through the process once at least. Cool. All right, so it looks like we are good to go. Okay. So next up is once you have iMacros installed, you're going to go to Tools and then Add-ons. And you guys should see iMacros right here. Okay, so again, you want to be under Tools, Add-ons, and then in this Extensions tab. And you guys should see iMacros for Firefox right here. Okay, once you're there, you're going to click Preferences. Okay, Tools, Add-ons. Make sure you add extensions and then hit preferences. Okay. 
Jason says, this workshop would be way more effective if you would have sent a pre-workshop video. No. The workshop is for you guys to follow along as the process goes. <laughs> At the end of the day, 90% of you wouldn't have done shit with it if I even gave you the whole process a day before. Okay? Follow along, buddy. Okay, so the important things to note here. Folder, macros, this is where you actually put in your macros, right? And so we're going to download our macro that we created for you guys. But the other thing that you need to know is this data sources. Okay, so if I were you guys, I would open up like some kind of notepad folder or something like that and just copy in these folder locations. Okay, again, the folder macros and the folder data sources. And so basically, the macros that we use are going to go in here. The CSV that we just generated is going to go in the data sources folder. Okay, so again, guys, just to make sure you're all following along, uh, we're going to go to Tools, Add-ons. That's going to bring us here. We're going to make sure we're under Extensions. We are going to then hit Preferences, and we're just going to copy these down so that we know where we're supposed to put our files. Okay, so now I'm going to give you guys the URL to download our macro. Okay, so I'm putting this in the chat for you guys, web1.co slash probing hyphen macro. So Mike Reamer said, just an FYI, in Windows, it's options instead of preferences. Thanks, Mike. Okay, so if you're using Windows, go to options in your menu instead of preferences. Okay, so this is options instead of preferences inside of Windows. Cool. So in Firefox on uh, Mac, we get there by going to tools and add-ons. You just want to find the add-ons. Okay. And then again, you're going to go to preferences and you're going to copy down these two sources, the macros folder and then the data sources folder. Okay, that's where we have to put our scripts. And again, the reason I tell you to like write them down or put them, you know, in a text edit or notepad is because you guys are going to have to keep going to these files. It's not like you go to it once and it's all over, right? So Anna Ashmore, you should be inside of Firefox. If you don't use Mac, you need to get to your extensions. Okay, once you get to extensions, Mike Reamer was nice enough to tell us that this doesn't say options or this doesn't say preferences on Windows, it says options. Okay, so you're going to want to go to preferences or options, and then under this path folder, you need to copy down these two locations. Give me a five real quick if you guys are there. Give me a five if you guys have already copied down these two locations. If you guys are using Windows, how do you get to the extensions area? Seems like that's the hold up with the Windows users. Anybody knows, if you could tell me in the chat, that would be fantastic so we can keep this thing moving. Uh, menu on the right, add-ons, it's the same but options, everybody says. Uh, in the right-hand corner, start at the three bars on the right and then click on add-ons if you're on Windows. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. So then, again, what we're going to do is we're going to download this file. So it just downloaded for me. Then what we're going to do is we need to go place our CSV and the macro that we just downloaded into those files. Okay, just to be clear, guys, the file I just downloaded and that you guys should have just downloaded too is going to be called YouTube underscore poke dot JS. And guys, this goes inside of your macros folder. For me, it's in users, Joe Troy, documents, iMacros, macros. Okay, and then we're going to take our CSV that we generated from Google Sheets. We're going to make sure that it's named pokes.csv and we're going to put that inside of the data sources folder.
Okay, so put YouTube underscore poke.js inside of the macros folder and put pokes.csv inside of the folder for the data sources. So I'm going to show you guys this process here real quick. So when you guys download, it's going to be a zip. So you guys need to un you need to extract it. And then this is a sample CSV that you guys can use. Okay? But if you guys went through and you did the Google Sheet, use that CSV instead, all right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this and we're going to put it into this folder, right? So to do that, I'm going to go to my hard drive on my Mac, and then I'm going to go to users. I'm going to go to Joe Troyer. What's next? We're going to go to documents, and then iMacros, documents, iMacros, then we're going to go to macros, okay? And we would just copy and paste, for me it's from my downloads, right, into this, into that folder, right? I already have it in there, but I can do it again. Okay. Then we are going to back up one folder. Okay, we're going to go to our data sources folder and we're going to copy in the pokes.csv or paste in, move in our pokes.csv file. And again, this is what it's going to use for all the data. Okay, this is what generates or what the macro uses to generate all the videos. Okay, so put your YouTube underscore poke.js file inside of your macros folder. Then put your pokes.csv inside of the data sources folder. Link again is web1.co slash probing hyphen macro. The pokes.csv can use the city name in the file to make it easier to track. No, it has to be named pokes.csv or it won't work. Okay, Joe, don't try to reinvent the process, buddy. Just follow along so you can get it down once. Then you can try to reinvent all you want, buddy. <laughs> uh, yep, yep, yep. Cool, cool, cool. All right, guys, give me a six when you guys are good to go. You guys have moved your files into the iMacros folders. Awesome. We are almost there. We are about to be able to poke or probe live. So while you guys are finishing up, I'll give you another minute or so. I'm going to get ready a quick demo to show you guys how this works. All right, give me one second as I get this ready for you guys. And again, if you're not done yet, just take the time now and finish up. I'm just going to be logging into one of my accounts here. So give me just a second to get this set up.
All right, guys, again, just give me a six when you're ready to go. Yep, you need to unzip it. You're going to get a zip file, unzip it, copy the pokes, JS file into the right folder, right? The macro part. Joe Emmett says, you repeat this process all the time? Not quite, right? So just stick with me, buddy. We'll go through the process once, and then I'll teach you how to do it again, all right? Stance says, way over my tech ability. Watch the replay. This isn't over anybody's tech ability. Super, super simple. Okay, 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 okay. All right, guys. So now I'm going to teach you guys how to run the macro. All right, up until now, we've been doing a lot of setup. Now's where you guys are going to see the process really start working. Okay, understand that, guys, a lot of this setup was one time setup. Moving forward now, it's not going to take near as long to get up and going. Okay, so I'm logged into uh, an account that I just purchased. So this is a brand new account. Um, I'm going to hit this little button right here, open up iMacros, and you guys are going to select the macro that you guys want to use. Obviously, you're going to want to use the YouTube underscore poke.js. We're going to hit play then, and then it's going to ask you the total numbers of videos that you guys want to create. Well, how many videos do we want to create? We want to create the same number of videos as are in our CSV source file, right? So there's going to be 11 in my example. Okay, so get rid of all this. So we're going to say 11, and we're going to click OK. Uh, actually, hang on one second. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, so uh, since this is a new channel or a new YouTube account, it's asking me to create a channel. So let me create the channel first. Okay, so now the channel's created. We're good. Again, I'm just going to hit play again, put in 11, and we're going to click OK. And guys, watch as the magic happens. <clears throat> there are breaks inputted here to make this seem natural as well and make it not seem automated. So right now, we just put in the project name, right? Emergency Plumbing Service Miami. Okay, now I'll put in our YouTube that we're going to use, YouTube video that we're going to use as our template. Now it's going to put in the little banner at the bottom. Okay, now we need to put in our own custom text here for the banner, right? This is going to be that caption line one and caption line two. Okay, it's going to preview it so you guys can see exactly what it's going to look like, right? So then I'm going to save it. Okay, we're going to go into the video now automatically with the macro. And again, guys, I'm not touching anything. We're going to go to Info and Settings. Then we're going to go to Advanced Settings, and it's going to set the geolocation of the video, right? Again, we've added in some delays to make this seem normal and not automated. Okay, so it puts in that, it puts in the recording date as well, and then it saves the video. Okay, then it has a 10 second roughly delay once it's done with the first video. We're at three, two, two seconds in the top left if you see it. It's really small, I'm sure. And then it'll keep going. Okay, I only had one actual line in there. That's why I didn't. it didn't create more videos, right? So if we look at my source file, it's only one line, not 11, all right? So basically it'll just keep repeating until it's done. Okay, so that is the process. That is how easy it is. So essentially, guys, we do this. We do this basically every day now. We've been running this process, um, and we have each of our virtual assistants run this process at least once a day when they stop work. What does that mean, right? When they're about to be done for the day, each of them 
do 50 pokes or probes for us. Right? It takes them about five minutes to set it up, and then they leave work and just let the computer run. Okay, so questions real quick before we go further. Let's see, Ken says, thank you, Joe, you're awesome. Thanks, brother. Uh, Lou says, can we alter the delay? Yes, you can. Um, somebody said that they got the same error that I did. Okay, this, the reason that you got that error is because you did what I did. You used the demo, you used the demo poke data inside the zip that you downloaded, right? That's why. Okay, there's only one line in there, so it's only going to work one time. You need to make sure that you get your pokes in there from the Google Sheet, right? And as many lines as are in there is how many it's going to do. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Where did you download the zip file from? It's in the chat, buddy. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks, Joe. Freaking gnarly man. All right, guys. So that's how the process works to run the pokes and the probes. This is how you run the macro. Um, the next thing that we're going to solve together here right now on the webinar is the rank tracking problem. Okay, so I call it the rank tracking problem because most people run this and then have no real way to track the rankings, all right? So you guys are going to start loving this tool. You're going to use it a lot, and tracking your rankings is going to be important. Okay? So we use a third little utility that we have called the YouTube Channel Ripper. And I'll give you guys access to this in the chat as well. Web1.co slash YouTube hyphen Ripper. And so again, guys, this should look familiar. You're going to go to this URL. You're going to click File, Make a Copy. Okay, so I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Once it's ready, File, Make a Copy. I'm just going to call it YouTube Channel Ripper. Okay, it's going to take a little bit, and it's going to take longer than a, a normal Google Doc, right? Um, and guys, that's because there's actually code and programming that lives within this Google Sheet. Okay, so the way that this one works, let me just shrink this up a little bit here so you guys can see everything, is you hit this YouTube button, and you say Get Channel Info. The first time, again, that it runs, you're going to need to click Continue to give it authorization. Okay, and then you're going to give it a channel URL. So what I would do after I'm done running all my pokes and probes for the day is I'm going to go to my channel. Okay, there's that video, by the way, that the macro created. And I'm going to go to my channel, and I'm going to grab my channel URL right here. Okay, I'm going to plug this into the Google Sheet. Okay, I'm going to put the channel URL in here, and what the script will do is bring back all of the video titles and URLs for every video in the channel. All right? But first, though, you guys need to hit this little details button so you guys can see this error. On the initial setup, when you guys do this, you need to follow these instructions. Once you do it once, you never need to do it again. Okay, basically it's saying that your API access is not configured and that the YouTube data API is not set up for this project, right, or it's disabled. Enable it by visiting. You're just going to copy this URL. Okay, you're going to copy this, open a new tab. You're going to paste it in your URL bar, and it's going to bring up Google's API console. Okay, all that you're going to do is just click Enable. Okay, now we're going to go back. We're going to click Dismiss. We're just going to refresh this. And we're going to put back in this channel 
YouTube get channel info. We're going to put in the channel URL again, and this time it'll actually work because the API is set up. I don't know why my connection so slow. Give me a second, fellas. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, it's just taking a while to run. Just letting this thing finish loading. For some reason, it took a minute. So YouTube, get channel info. We're going to put in the full channel URL. Okay, and it's going to bring back all of the videos. In this channel, we only have the one YouTube video, right, that we just published together. Okay, it's going to bring back that and the title. And, guys, this works if your channel is huge or if your channel is tiny. Okay, for example, if we go to YouTube... And let's say that we do a search for digital triggers. We have a lot of videos on the digital triggers channel, right? Okay, this will work with every video on the channel as well. Watch. So, again, YouTube, get channel info. To the channel URL, click OK. And, guys, this one's going to take a little bit, but it will literally get every single video. Check this out. 138 videos. Okay, guys, again, the link for the Ripper, Ripper is web1.co slash YouTube hyphen Ripper. Okay, so any questions on running the Ripper? Uh, Zena says, do you only want us to use the YouTube channel Ripper on throwaway uh, accounts? You guys can use the Ripper on anything. It just uses the API. That's fine. When you guys are actually poking and probing, though, you need to make sure that the email account that you're using, the Google uh, and YouTube account that you're using, is a throwaway account. <laughs> Jay says, the Ripper alone is worth a 1000 bucks. What do you need to enable in the Google API? Uh, I just showed you. Uh, I can't go back there. Um, uh, let's see if I do. Let's see if I can try to do it. Uh, maybe one of my other accounts here isn't set up. But again, you just need to follow the process. It's going to give you an error. You read that error and go to the URL that it says and click enable. So um, YouTube, get channel info continue. I'm going to put in a different account and see if I can try to get the message to come up again, Paul, but I don't know that it's going to let me. Yeah, it's not going to let me, Paul. Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to get that error up here. Right? You just need to follow the URL that it gives you. Go to that URL and click Enable. That's it. It's very, very simple. You guys can obviously catch it in the replay as well. Let's see. Ken says value of this stuff is priceless. Awesome. Yes, replay will be available. Awesome. All right, so guys, again, you're just going to go to YouTube, get channel info. You're going to authorize through the API. You're going to insert the channel URL, and it's going to throw an error the first time you run it. Copy and paste the URL from that error into a tab and click Enable API Access. Okay, and then it will work when you run through it again. Okay, Azu says I wasn't given the air URL, mine just looped like yours just did. Uh, that's because that's a channel, Azu, not my actual account. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Should this be done in throwaway accounts only? Again, guys, the only time that you use throw account, throwaway accounts is when you're using the actual macro and you're logging into Gmail or into your YouTube account right here, right? 
that's where you use the throwaway accounts. For all the Google Sheets, the two Google Sheets that I gave you guys, the YouTube River, Ripper and the, the probing uh, CSV generation script, each of those you don't need to use a throwaway account. You can use your primary account. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks, thanks, thanks. All right. Somebody said, what's the difference between an account and a channel? Okay, so what happens right here when you say get channel info and it asks you guys for access, uh, I'm just going to have to force do this again. So file, make a copy. You guys are killing me. I have so many copies of this now. But I think it is important to talk to you guys about the difference between a channel and an account in the OAuth, all right? So when you go to YouTube, get channel info, you're going to click continue. These, this, and this are both channels. You cannot authorize the API with a channel. You should see an email address here. Use that account. If you try to use a channel, it will never work. Okay, and uh, I tested this um, with some really, really big channels, uh, like some of the fitness guys. Um, what's that guy's name? Like Ta, the big fitness guy. Uh, I forget. This guy's got a ton, though. Athlean X, I know for sure. Whoop, whoop. So let's use his channel as an example here. Okay, so this is the error. Great, I finally got it to come back up. All right, so follow along. If you guys missed this earlier, what you guys are going to do is click details here when the error hits. Okay? You need to read this. Okay? Specifically, you need to enable the API by visiting this URL. So I'm just going to copy this. Okay, I'm hitting Command C or I can right click and copy it. Okay, I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to go to that URL. When I go there, it's going to be Google's API console, and you just need to click this blue enable button. That's literally it. Okay? Once you do that, you should see it say disable, but obviously you don't want to disable it. Okay, so now I can grab any channel that I want, and it'll bring back all of their titles of their videos and their corresponding URLs as well. Mike Chang, yep, that's the name. Can we use anyone's channel in the Ripper? You sure can. Okay, see how long this is taking to run? Understand, guys, this isn't a problem. This guy has a ton of videos. Like, look at this. Load more. This is just two months ago, four months ago seven months ago, right? It's cycling through and grabbing all of these for you guys. Obviously, it's going to take a little bit. That is crazy. Two years ago, two years ago, two years ago, two years ago, three years ago. Okay, check this out. Just got done running. It ripped out of the Athlean X channel 634 or 633 videos and titles, not counting the uh, the top. It worked! Wow! <laughs> All right. So now that we have this list, <clears throat> let me find a better example. Okay, so now that we have this list, what we use is um, we use uh, Pro Rank Tracker to track our rankings. Uh, and we can track our YouTube rankings with Pro Rank Tracker and our Google rankings with Pro Rank Tracker. Um, you guys can sign up here if you don't already have an account. Uh, the reason I like Pro Rank Tracker is. I think that they do a really good job on the video tracking side of things, um, and they're a lot less expensive than a lot of the competition. And so basically what we do with the Google Sheet data that we just got 
is inside a pro rank tracker on the left here we go to add URLs and terms and then add desktop and we copy and paste all the URLs into this URL box right here and then we put in the search terms right here we use our title of our video okay and we just copy and paste again okay right because the title of our video actually right here the title of our video is what the keyword we're trying to rank for okay so let me log into my account here at pro rank tracker and I'll show you guys exactly how we do this Stay on full screen ProRankTracker.com. Give me one second, fellas and ladies. Log into my account here. All right. So basically, again, what we're going to do here is we're going to go down to Add URLs and Terms, and then we're going to click Add Desktop. Okay. And then what you guys are going to see is this page right here, right? It should just look like the screenshot that I showed you guys. When we use this on one of our channels, the title is the keyword phrase that we're trying to rank for, and the URL is the actual video URL, right? So what we would do is we'd copy, I'm just gonna do, let's say, two through 15 here. We'd copy the title of the video, which is the keyword phrase that we wanna rank for, into the search terms, okay? Then we come back over here, and we grab the URLs, and again, we'd copy them, and paste them into the URLs tab, and then we're gonna turn on this exact match. Okay, what this does is look at the individual YouTube URL to see if it's ranking, right, versus just any YouTube URL. If you guys are not using this exact match feature, you're gonna end up getting skewed results. It could show you guys that you're ranking when really one of your competitors is. So just make sure that you guys use this exact match. Then when we scroll down, we go to search engines. Um, by default, typically our team only uses google.com uh, for local stuff. If you guys are um, have any channels that are about stuff other than like local lead gen stuff, uh, tracking inside of YouTube is also uh, helpful. But for our kind of purposes, um, in terms of just local lead gen, typically we don't use it. Okay, so usually we just do Google. Okay, then we just click Save. Um, one little note here in terms of groups and tags, just how we organize our stuff. Uh, for groups, we put them in money sites, right? So let's say I was a uh, let's say I was going after a appliance repair site. I would do Jacksonville Appliance Repair, or whatever the name of the money site is for the group. And then in terms of tags, I do the same thing, uh, but then I also add probing. Okay, and this just allows me to, to really do a good job uh, when I'm running my queries to see how everything's ranking. I can filter down into my Jacksonville Appliance group or my money site group, and then I can only look at tags meaning probing, right? So I can only look at Jacksonville Appliance Repair site rankings, and then I can filter down even further and only look at the probing rankings. Amazing, amazing, did it on my channel. This is so cool, cool guys. All right, so if you haven't used Pro Rank Tracker yet, um, I highly recommend this. Again, we use this for our video rankings. The other thing that it's really good at is, um, is any third-party URLs. And what I mean by that is anything that's ranking in Google besides your money site. Okay, for our money sites, we actually don't hold those uh, rank trackings inside Pro Rank Tracker. Um, instead, we use very specific uh, tracking so that we can do organic, uh, we can kind of modify our location, uh, and we can also track uh, our maps rankings easier. Okay, so Pro Rank Tracker, we just use for videos and third party sites to track. Cool? All right, guys. So give me some feedback in the chat. What do you guys think so far? And for those of you guys that are, uh, are telling me you think I'm done, I'm not done. We are not done. This is the tip of the iceberg. Okay, in a second, I'm going to teach you guys how to supercharge the 
shit out of this. This is nothing. This is the, the tip, right? These are three pieces that I've been working on automating so that we can literally you know, leverage this process as well as possible. But next up, I'm going to show you guys how to literally just supercharge the shit out of this. Uh, Philip says, what pro ranker track, uh, pro rank, pro rank tracker plan do you use? Uh, just pick out the right one for you, Philip. Start with a small one, and when you need more, upgrade. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, give me some feedback, guys. What do you think? Before we move on and I show you more, we're an hour and 19 minutes in. I want to know what the hell you guys thought the last hour and 20 minutes. Is this good stuff? Good stuff, good stuff. Awesome, guys. So um, real quick, let's do a quick bathroom break. I myself am about to pee my pants. So it is 4.20 p.m. We're going to take a quick intermission, and I'm going to show you guys the next part of it. Understand we're not going to be here for another hour and 20 minutes. Um, it's actually pretty easy, but this is going to supercharge your guys' results, okay? So give me 10 minutes, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. We're going to start back up, and I'm going to show you guys how to supercharge this system. All right? So we'll get started again at 4 30 p.m. Eastern, all right? 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes.
All right, all right. So we got about four minutes until this quick intermission is over. Uh, so I'm going to answer some questions that we got in the chat, try to clear some stuff up. Um, so let's see, Tim Stevens says, hey Joe, uh, I don't have tons of YouTube videos, only about 50. I don't have multiple YouTube channels. Can you explain, can you please explain again briefly why when using poking and probing, it's important, uh, why it's important and what is its purpose? To get boatloads of video rankings, Tim, literally in a day using this process, I've gotten 200, 300 first page rankings using this system. So why would you want to do it? To get more rankings, right? <laughs> so again, you want to use throwaway accounts so that you don't jeopardize your money YouTube channel or any YouTube channels that are important to you. Um, let's see, Eric Garrett says, what do you use to track your money site rankings? So Eric, with our lead gen sites, we are wanting very accurate maps rankings and city specific rankings. A lot of the rank trackers out there don't do a very good job of, of tracking local based queries with their search engine uh, ranking uh, systems. They, a lot of them now as of late had advertised that they have that feature. In my experience though, <laughs> they don't actually work real well. Um, when you actually look up the keyword terms and uh, yourself in that area uh, using a proxy or being in that locale, uh, the ranking is very different than what the ranking report will, will show you. Uh, so we use to track our, our uh, to track our money sites, we're using right now brightlocal.com to track all of our uh, Google organic rankings and also our Google Maps rankings. <laughs> Jimmy said, I scared him when I came back on. Uh, yes, replay will be available. Let's see, Tad says, did you mention how long the probing uh, vids will stick if they rank? Just curious. So there's um, a couple things to that, Tad. First off, um, if they rank, they'll probably rank for a while pretty well, unless you have competition that comes out and takes them right out, right? Um, so that's why we like to track them with pro rank trackers. So if we see something drop a little bit, we can go and give it some TLC, give it some attention to get it ranking again. The biggest problem, again, that we have with poking and probing is that when we do too many of them on a channel, we end up getting flagged by our competition and the channel gets taken down. So that's why we as well don't put a boatload on every single channel, right? We minimize our risk there. Cool, cool, cool. So let's see, Natalie says, um, I haven't had problems getting the videos up and on page one of the video search. Um, but they don't seem to stick on page one of regular search. So again, just use the rank tracking, Natalie. The ones that fall, what you're going to want to do is give it a little bit more of a boost, right? Use backlinks, embeds, and social signals to get it to stick, right? Uh, and so when we have something that falls, Natalie, we give it a little bit more TLC to get it back up there. Cool, cool. Uh, Dave Thomas says, are you using poking to also determine if a prospective market is a suitable one to attack? No. So Dave, when we look at local markets, um, we, we, we're very, very um, careful about the markets that we do go after, right? We don't go after anything with over 350,000 in population because we know it's going to take a really long time to rank. And we also don't go um, typically you know, after things that are really low, low uh, population. We do, however, with poking and probing, we do because it's so easy, go after a lot of smaller locations and towns and cities because we can rank very quickly and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. So again, your question, are you using poking to determine if a prospective market is suitable? No, because we already have our standards 
for what is suitable and what's not, right? So for us, we're looking for bigger ticket stuff. We like uh, blue collar versus white collar niches. Um, and we like niches where people aren't shopping around. We already, by using just those three criteria, are narrowing right, our niche big time. I'm only getting about 8% of my leads from video. Is that a low number? Video doesn't convert near as well as Google Maps or your site will. So understand that. The reason that we do this, again, is because it's so damn easy. We can get a boatload of results quickly. Thomas says, if you get a channel slapped, I suppose the money site will be okay. Yep, I've never, ever had a money site hit from YouTube poking or probing. Uh, let's see, Todd says, do you ever go back and flag your competition? Uh, I don't. I don't like to get in a pissing war with my competition. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Azu, watch the replay, buddy. I think that'll do the best in answering that question. All right, all right. Okay, so it is 4.30. I'm going to jump into the supercharge now. So the supercharge involves Sindwire. <clears throat> so real quick, um, give me a four in the chat if you don't have Sindwire. Give me a four in the chat if you don't have Sinwire. Okay, so quite a few fours. Okay, cool. So um, for those of you guys, obviously this webinar is not public, so what I wanted to do is give you guys all a trial to Sinwire so you guys can get using it, see results, make some money, obviously before you actually have to pay a dime. So um, if you guys go to this link, all of you guys that gave me a four, http colon slash slash web1.co slash Sinwire trial. And guys, there's nobody even on the marketplace that has a trial. You guys are the only ones. Web1.co slash Sinwire trial. You guys can get a uh, free 14-day trial. Okay. What we're going to go over now, I'm assuming that you guys have a Sinwire subscription or will get a Sinwire subscription. Okay. Uh, let's see. Teresa says, Sinwire is the best investment I've ever made for online marketing. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So real quick, um, give me a three if you guys know what Sinwire's video sync feature is or you've used it. Give me a three. All right. So not that many. We got a couple threes. Okay, so we pushed out this feature and we haven't done a whole lot of training on this feature. It's super, super powerful. Um, the reason that we haven't is because we needed to make sure that all the kinks were kind of worked out uh, and specifically by kinks just to be kind of level with you guys. This process requires a lot of processing power uh, because of what we're doing in it. And so it wasn't really kinks to be worked out so much as just seeing how much the system could handle before we had to change the process or upgrade the process to, to make it handle more, okay? So essentially, what Video Sync does, and Video Sync is a trigger, and I'll show you guys how to set this up, but basically the logic is this. You say when a video is uploaded to this specific YouTube channel, automatically distribute that video to, and then you can choose any of the other YouTube, or I'm sorry, any of the other video channels inside of Sinwire, like Dailymotion, VO, Photobucket, Flickr, and Vimeo. So again, no other technology really does this. So what we do is, you guys give us your channel URL for YouTube, and we stock it. We check that channel every 10 minutes to see if a new video was added. Somebody says, does if this, then that do this? No. Listen. Okay, we stock that channel to see if a video was added. Okay, when you guys add a video, we automatically download the video. We scrape all of your information that you guys use, right? Your title, your description, etc. Okay, and we actually download the video file. Okay, then we automatically distribute it to the other video sharing sites that you guys give us, like Dailymotion, VO, Photobucket, Flickr, and Vimeo. 
Does that make sense? We automatically redistribute everything that you give us. I'm going to give you guys a second to let that sink in. Does that make sense? There is nothing else in the marketplace that has ever done this. Ever. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to set this up. And it's going to save you guys a boatload of time, boatload of money, and it's going to help you guys get even more results when you guys are doing probing, probing and probing. Probing and poking. Um, you're talking embeds or new files? No, new files. We download the video. We redistribute that video. Okay, so give me one second. Let me just show you guys here how this process works real fast so that I can make sure that we're all on the same page because this is super, super powerful. So I'm going to log into my Sinwire account here, show you guys a quick example of how we set this up. So essentially inside of Sinwire, once we log in, we're going to go to uh, triggers and we're going to go to new triggers. And you guys are going to see two options there for triggers. You're going to see uh, a video sync trigger and an RSS trigger. Okay, I'm talking about the video sync trigger. So I'm just logged into one of my Sinwire accounts here and I'm just going to show you guys how this works, right? New trigger. Okay, then we're going to choose video sync. And we need to go get our channel ID and add it to the end of this query. Okay, so for example, let's say we wanted to use this account that we all set up together and went through. I grab this channel ID right here, right? You got to go to your channel. So I'm on my channel page. Okay, I'm going to copy this. Whoop. I'm going to copy this right here, right? Copy. I'm going to go back over to Sinwire. I'm going to put this at the end, right? This is my channel ID. And if you don't know what you're doing, there's instructions literally step by step on the previous step. Okay, so right here it says we fetch RSS tri or we fetch trigger RSS feeds every 10 minutes. I'm going to click continue. And now we're going to select and bear with me guys, this is going to take a minute to load. I have a lot of accounts inside of this uh, this Sinwire account. Now we select any other video network that we want. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to start selecting video networks. Okay, so here's YouTube's. I can even distribute it to other YouTube accounts. Okay, so I added a couple of YouTube accounts. Let's do two of each: two Daily Motion accounts, uh, VO accounts, and Photo Bucket. Here's VO. Let's do a couple of Photo Bucket, and let's call that good for now. We're going to click Continue. It's going to take a second to set the, up this campaign in the back end, and it's going to say, success, your trigger was added. Okay, this is the trigger that we just added right here. So whenever you guys in the future want to come look at it, this is how many accounts we're posting to, eight different video accounts when it finds a new video. And so far, there's been zero posts. I just set one up yesterday when I was playing around with this. This is one. We've done... We have six accounts, and we've done 12 total posts since yesterday just on that trigger. It is completely automated. So in other words, guys, as soon as I upload a video here, from now moving forward, we're going to ch keep checking this channel for new videos. When we find one, let's say that this is a brand new video that I publish right now. Within 10 minutes, Sinwire is going to find it. It's going to download this video file. It's going to copy the title. It's going to copy the description. And then it's going to redistribute that video to the eight accounts that I selected, all on autopilot. Give me a four if that makes sense. And this is a huge aha moment. Okay, this by itself is going to supercharge the shit out of your rankings. And again, nobody else has this technology. Somebody asked what about embeds and everything else? So let me show you guys that real quick. You can do a new trigger and just choose RSS. Right? So instead, just choose RSS instead of video sync. 
you would put in your YouTube channel ID. So I'm just going to give it this example. Let's see if this will work. You put in your YouTube channel embed. Uh, hang on, let me get one. You're going to grab your YouTube channel ID. But basically what you would do is just grab your YouTube channel ID here, put it in the RSS feed, and go through and set it up that way instead of the video sync. If you want to build backlinks automatically through your social profiles, your bookmarks, and your blog posts for embeds as well. Okay, You just use the RSS feed option instead of video sync. Okay. So um, real quick, a couple things I want to show you guys. I showed you that, I showed you that. All right, so when you guys use the video sync function, okay, understand that not every video is going to go live on every network 100% of the time. Okay, you have to understand that each network has some of its own specific rules, okay, their own methodologies. So for example, daily motion is the most stringent on these rules at least up until this point they only let you do four uploads per hour okay they only as well let you post 20 hours of video per day okay so if the post fails let's say to daily motion Sinwire is going to automatically retry to post on your behalf if we can't get it to inside of your network notifications and your post history you guys will see a repost button that you guys can use that will put that back into the queue so let me just show you guys a real quick example of this if I go up under history uh, I'll show you an example uh, Palm Beach Gardens. I'm just doing a search for what was in the post title. In this example, obviously, it would be our video title. And it's going to take a second here. Again, this account is, uh, is loaded. Okay, so you'll see these were all from a video sync. Okay? And you'll see that, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, five out of six were successful. So only one failed, and it was actually on VO, right? So if I wanted to repost this, I just click repost. And it's going to bring up the video post. It's going to actually contain your video, and then you would just hit submit, right? It's already selected the account that it failed on and re-put everything back into the post. So all that you guys have to do is hit submit. Does that make sense? I don't know why it said you didn't upload a video. The other way that you guys will see when something fails is in the network notifications area. Let me load that real quick. So for example, it'll show up in the recent activities area here let's see if we can find a video again this account is super active you guys see the dates here these are all today but we should be able to find here see guys how many posts this month 22,000 almost a million post lifetime on this account uh, trying to find one again so much activity but basically, it would look like this, right? And it would have the repost button, and again, it'll take you guys to the same place. Right? Like you guys are posting a video by hand, but it'll automatically fill in the up video for you guys and pre-fill the title and the description with whatever the original video had. Cool. Cool, cool. You guys are all being quiet. Isn't that nuts? That's freaking crazy. Okay, if that's not enough, I got one more big tip for you guys as well. One more big tip. But I need all of you guys excited for this one. Give me a 10 if you guys are ready. Well, you guys can't do 10. Give me a 9 if you're ready. 
nine 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 right lots and lots of nines all right we still got close to 200 people on the webinar even after we're an hour and 45 minutes in so give me a nine if if you guys are stoked already and you're ready for the next one ready for the next tip um, real quick while you guys are giving me nines um, it took me when I did a video sync test earlier today it took me about roughly 25 minutes for me to get the video sync live what I mean by that is at 12 17 p.m. today I published a video on my YouTube channel that I had the video sync set up watching right at 12 19 the video went live on the channel and by 12 42 the video sync was done and my accounts were posted right my videos were all posted to the corresponding accounts <clears throat> All right, guys, so steroids part two is something that I just started playing with. Just, just started playing with. So I can give you guys part of the equation. I can't really give it to you all yet because I haven't figured out everything yet. But with um, before video sync existed, we used to use the trigger and just the RSS trigger, right? So we go to triggers here. We'd set up a new trigger. And we'd put it on our uh, YouTube channel, right? So we put in our YouTube channel RSS feed here and basically say anytime a new video is uploaded, I want to automatically publish content, right? I want to throw out some embeds. I want to throw out some links from my social bookmarking sites. And I want to throw out some links um, from uh, my blog post too, right? And that worked and it worked really, really well, okay? what I want to impress upon you guys today is what's to stop you guys from doing that same thing but not only with YouTube now right you can automatically do the same thing with a feed from Dailymotion, VO, Photobucket, Flickr and Vimeo okay, and the reason why I said I haven't figured it all out yet is I can't quite find a feed yet for VO and photo bucket okay but YouTube daily motion Flickr and Vimeo are done okay so what's in red right here is where your specific user ID goes right so in YouTube it goes at the end daily motion it goes here uh, Flickr it goes here and then Vimeo it goes right here should probably make that red Okay, so if you do that, what will happen is every single time a new video is added, you guys can automatically from any of your accounts have it go post out and link up or embed to it, right? So, for example, if we go to our accounts tab here inside of Sinwire, you guys will see what's possible. For those of you guys that have known about Sinwire or have an account but maybe haven't been in here in a while, you guys will notice that things look a little bit different. There's an ass load of accounts in here now. Okay, and we have everything separated by type, right? So these are the status update sites, the bookmarking sites, blog posts, videos, and PDFs. Does that make sense? So the last step, set up a regular trigger with just the RSS feed for each of the video networks that you guys are pushing content to and have it automatically, Sinwire post automatically to your profiles so that you guys can get backlinks, embeds, and socials on literally autopilot. So guys, that's it. That's like all that I got for you guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today. I hope it was an eye-opener. I know obviously you guys are going to need to watch the replay and probably go through and digest it another time or two, but I really, really appreciate you guys being on here, sticking with me for an hour and 50 minutes. I know it was a long one, but I know that these tools are going to help you. I've been working on building these for basically the last month and a half, almost two months now, um, and as soon as I got them good, and ready to go obviously they are now in your guys' hands and I don't want to have any delay so again um, guys do me a big big favor please don't share this with with anybody this is just for you guys and and please remember your commitment at the beginning of the call I am like literally giving you guys all that I have here giving you guys little literally every tip trick 
automation and hack that you guys can possibly do. Why? Because I want you guys to go out there and fucking crush it. Okay. In return, all that I ask is for three things. Okay. Number one, your commitment to actually do something with what I showed you today. Okay. Number two, your commitment to provide feedback, specifically in the beta channels inside of Slack. Okay, if you guys have problems, if you guys have suggestions, if you guys have feature requests, that's where we want them. Please, please, again, don't submit a support ticket. My team doesn't even know shit about this. They haven't even seen it yet, right? You guys are the first to see this stuff. Okay, and last but not least is I would love a testimonial from you guys with your results, okay? I don't want something that's fake. If you guys didn't get results, then obviously I don't expect a testimonial, okay? But you guys go through the system and you you know I showed you guys to use it today. You guys are going to do awesome with it. And when you do, I just want a couple of words talking about your results and that you would recommend it to others. Does that sound cool? Is that good? One last final thought or comment. If you guys just joined Local Lead Gen Mastery and you were previously not a Web1 or Digital Triggers customer and this is your first webinar with us, I'd love to hear you in the chat say my first webinar, right? Type in my first or my first webinar and I'd love to specifically from you hear some feedback on today's call because I know that there's quite a few of you guys on here. Okay, I hope I over-delivered like a mother for you guys and you guys really, really enjoyed today's call. This is just the first of many. We have some crazy, crazy shit brewing up in the labs here at Digital Trigger. So appreciate all of you guys. Go out there and crush it and I will see you guys inside of the Slack group. Bye for now.